Hi, my name is Ricky, and welcome to the first episode of Share Your Story. Share Your Story is all about men and women sharing the story with us. No matter if you were a combat medic or a cook on a ship, active or veteran, we want to hear about it. Check description for more information on how to apply. My first guest in episode one is Simon, and we're all about to hear his story. Simon, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining. It's uh, it's going to be an amazing time together. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I, w- I think we're going to start from the beginning. Uh, you are a Swede, right? Yeah. And I'm a Swede, and this is not something that is common in a Swede, right? Doing military service. No, actually, it's really uncommon nowadays. I think, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's very uncommon. It's very uncommon. It's a small, it's a small uh, armed forces we have, and it's a large country, of course. So we are spread out pretty thin. People don't tend to see us that often, and that makes us, how to say, vanish. Yeah, I get that. I get that. So I, I want to start from the beginning. So uh, to my knowledge, you did your your first military service in the form of conscription, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, I was conscripted in 2006 and seven. So what at the time? Yeah, what did you do? Uh, at the time, I was a reconnaissance squad leader. Reconnaissance. And that, yeah, and that means uh, we actually went in, how to say, we trained for going in behind enemy lines and uh, find the weaknesses in the enemy defenses and find the enemy's uh, command and control sites and call in artillery or close air support in case we have uh, those resources. Okay. Or so- in, uh, in worst case, we actually managed to attack them ourselves and then pull out or die. Okay. Okay, so after that, I did mine too. I did my conscription as a loader for how howitzers. You continued, but did you continue in the same field as your conscription? No, uh, actually, after the conscription time, it was uh, eleven months. After that, I was uh, how to say selected to the. Uh, uh, what we call it the foreign forces not foreign foreigners force the foreign <laughs> force the, the yeah. force that we send out on deployments okay and uh, Deployment. right after conscription time i went to afghanistan actually for eight months directly after conscription yeah okay so directly from conscription to the unit training for you know the workup you go to the training and you get the cultural tra- training the how to say combat training and stuff and additional vehicles training and st- everything you need for deployment okay so basically conscription and you did like a combat training then you went to afghanistan yeah so you're on a plane now picture yourself you're on that plane going towards a nation at war what's going through your head well as a 21 year old i think I was mostly excited because I wanted to get tested. You know, we trained for uh, first 11 months as a conscript, and then we trained the uh, additional six months to for the deployment. I wanted to get tested. I wanted to, you know, if know if my skills work. If uh, how to say? I get basically it. if I if I can hack the combat. Yeah. Yeah. The stress, the adrenaline. Yeah. So you. Exactly, at that what point, everybody talked about, but nobody actually had any, uh, any experience of. Okay, so all, all those guys in that plane, was there anyone that had, like, previous experience? Or you guys were all green? Oh, we were plenty. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't a group of conscripts. Out of the group of conscripts, it was three or four of us that were selected to be actually, to become soldiers. Oh, it's wait. a very narrow. How do you say? It's a very narrow selection there. Okay, so all the guys that were picked were they from the yeah. same conscription as you, or they were like picked from all other other places? Uh, that that force I talked about, the foreign force. Uh, yeah. it's it it's actually from people from all over the armed forces that comes together. Uh, how to say, like a task unit style. 
you know, you pick you pick and choose the best. Uh, how to say the raisins yeah. out of the cookie? <laughs> yeah, I got, I got. Yeah, it. and you you, and you get to pick and choose. Yeah, and the commanders pick and choose whoever they want because they're good or have per good personal relationship because you're actually going to war. And it's not, you know, our country's attack war. It's a war you can actually pick and choose who you want to go uh, go with. So, do, so do you uh, out of the platoon... Sorry. Yeah, yeah go, 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 go. Uh, continue. Uh, out of the platoon uh, that I was in, there were four guys of us that were selected uh, to, to join this force. Two of the two of us was directly sent to Afghanistan. The other two was uh, placed in a reservist unit in case any of us got hit uh, or got wounded. We get shipped back, and we need somebody with similar education, how to say, similar training to take my place. So reserve, as a reserve, yeah. Okay. So I didn't at know the that. time there was they were in the reserve in the in the uh, uh, in the army back in the uh, back in Sweden uh, at the regiment. Okay, so he said that he basically was at base and just waiting, or if something happened to one of you guys that got like priority going down, anyone got hit? Yeah, or exactly. Injured. Yeah, okay. So he just but, but not doing not doing nothing. I mean, he he was doing the daily stuff like you know going to the range or training or uh, yeah. as an instructor for the new soldiers and so on. Oh, okay. So he had he had a job. He's not just sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that would uh, be. <laughs> That would, that would be painful. That would be painful. Okay, so you're sitting on your airplane now, and you're going, and were you going in a, on a Hercules C-130? Uh, first time. Yeah. Yeah, first time we went uh, as complete civilians from Sweden down to uh, Abu Dhabi. Oh. In the United Arab Emirates. Yeah. And there we transitioned to military cargo plane. Okay. And flew into Afghanistan over Pakistan. Okay, so where did you, you landed in? So in Afghanistan, in Mazar -e Sharif, we landed in Mazar -e Sharif in northern Afghanistan. And the way they landed, I got to tell you, this was crazy. I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> it was an Italian uh, C-130, all right. And they do this tactical infl this how to say tactical approach to the airfield, and that means they go from i don't know seven thousand meters height down to the airfield directly and it's like it's not like you know a normal airplane it goes down slowly with two or three degrees decline this was like you know fucking free fall oh. sorry for sorry no, for swearing but no 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 it's okay <laughs> it was it was the worst roller coaster pre-party ever Okay, okay, so this, this is a precaution just in case he gets shot down yeah. by uh, anti air weapon weaponry, right? That's, exactly, yeah. in case they had these man pads or anything like yeah. that in, in country. So, this is one of the precautionary things. Oh, and man, the crew had, I bet, I bet the crew had to wipe the floors of Swedish puke <laughs> for, for like <laughs> an hour or so because everybody puked. It was like, oh, really? Almost, almost two or three minutes free fall. And nobody knew what was up or down. It, it shook. We were scared. Nobody, nobody ever had experienced this before. That is amazing, that, though. That was a good wake up call. It's like you yeah. know, welcome to Afghanistan. Now you're you're at war now. <laughs> okay, so you you're landing and uh, the back opens up, and I can can you feel the heat directly because now you're in your uh, military gear, correct? Yeah, no, we we we're, we're in uh, we're actually in civilian clothes. Okay. Yeah, we flew in civilian in a military cargo plane. Okay. Uh, so what happens is the ramp goes down in the back of yeah. the Her Hercules. Yeah. And the first thing, just as I said, what, that was hitting me in the face was the heat and the stench of shit, oh, human yeah. excrement. Oh, sh okay, really? in a third really? world in a third world country that hit my nostrils. So shit and heat, right? Shit and shit heat. And heat. <laughs> yeah, that, that's basically Afghanistan for you. That's, shit that's, and heat. Okay, that's <laughs> that's really nice to feel that. Like I'm going to war, and the first thing you you smell is uh, shit, and you got heat. So I understand that. But that was uh, was it a Swedish base or was it an American base or what kind of base was it? Or was it a joint base or what what it, what was it? Well, it was 
uh, it was a joint base, but the Germans had the uh, the responsibility for it. It was uh, it's ca- called Camp Marmal in northern Afghanistan. Oh, okay, yeah, right out right outside Mazar Sharif. Okay, so that base had it to your knowledge has it had it been attacked before, or it was a it was a well defended well defended air base that the, there was no worries about being attacked or overrun or something like that. I don't know. Uh, probably there have been attacks before since the base actually has a how to say a structure uh, yeah. or how to say this has high Hesco walls and stuff. So the big walls around. Probably, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Big walls around it, and the whole the whole airfield, even the airstrip, you know, where the airplanes land and go yeah. up, yeah, was was walled in, so oh. nobody could actually get to the get to the base. Oh, okay, okay. So you are uh, you're now step you're now taking your first step uh, out of the plane. Your boots hit Afghanistan. What happened? What happens now? Well, we transitioned from civilian clothes to the uniform. Picked up uh, weapons and ammo. Our gear and stuff was delivered there, of course. And uh, then it was to, uh, then it was off to the uh, the APCs, armored personal carriers, that took us from that camp, uh, approximately four or five kilometers further into town, where the Swedish camp was uh, situated, in Camp Northern Lights. Yeah, I recognize that. Right inside, yeah, right inside the. Uh, uh, Mazar Sharif, and this is I don't know forty five minutes travel through Afghanistan. Bumpy. Yeah, bumpy, dusty. You know, it's a new country. You don't know shit about anything. But wait a minute, uh, wait, are you still <laughs> were, were you still in your civilian gear? No, no, no. We transitioned. Uh, so you, 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 you okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Because I, I was thinking beautiful. like, okay, shit, you guys are going out. Uh, in the middle of nowhere in Afghanistan with your jeans on. But I, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Of course, I'm that, that would probably work better, though, yeah. because <laughs> the Taliban shoots at soldiers, not yeah. at civilians yeah. most often. So, <laughs> so I, I bet the, the roads was like really sh- like shit. Yeah, really. Sh- yeah. One thing I was, one thing that Afghanistan taught me is that asphalt yeah. <laughs> is God's <laughs> gift to humanity. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. And those vehicles are not like, uh, well known for being comfortable, you know, right? No, it was pretty comfy. Yeah, yeah it was pretty comfortable. Yeah, yeah, okay, it was pretty good. Yeah, they were, they were made for going to rough terrain and stuff. It was uh, armored personal carriers. It's uh, it was a nice uh, seats and stuff like that. Yeah, really nice seats. It was a six by six, uh, it good seat. It was it was mine protected, so it was pretty comfy. And I bet there was air condition, right? Nope. There was no, <laughs> so it was pretty hot. It's like a sitting yeah, inside a hot. microwave, being full blast. <laughs> yeah, that's a good description, actually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I go for that. So you I'll get, go for that description. You reach Camp Northern Light, right? Exactly. Okay. And we reach this place. We get off, and we get our in a brief. Uh, do you know? Welcome to Afghanistan. This is what happens at this camp. This is the rules. This is where you eat. This is where you shit. This is where you take a shower. Only two minutes hot. Uh, this is you only have two minutes of uh, water per day uh, as a water ra- ra- ransom. How does that? No, not ransom. What do you say? Ration. Yeah, ra- yeah, yeah, ra- yeah, yeah. They're rationing the water since they don't have infinite, infinite, of, infinite of water. So how how so, was that? So you you could you shower each day? Or it was like, yeah. yeah, okay, you could. Each day for two minutes. Yeah. Oh, my God. You got to do a... And you're all sweaty and sandy and shit. You got to do that for two for two minutes. That's yeah. incredible. And, and, and you think, yeah, and you think, you know, it, it's uh, it's enough. You, you might think it's enough as, as a military man. But the thing is that the, the person who decided that probably works in an air-conditioned office. Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. He has no idea. No idea. <laughs> yeah. That the time it takes for you to walk from the showers after you took a shower back to your barrack actually makes you sweaty. Yeah. Yeah. And all <laughs> sandy again. You got to go back. Yeah. Uh, that's incredible. So you do you have your like your own room or you bunk with others? We bunk three and three in a. Uh, it's like you know a twenty-two foot container. Yeah. 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 
if you can if you can imagine a 22 foot container with a door yeah it's uh it's made up as a room with uh, two uh two beds on uh in one end and one bed in the other end yeah and you have no privacy at all did you know these guys before yeah of course it, yeah. it was uh it was my team my teammate okay so what was your primary job down there? Was it just combat? That was it. There was a reconnaissance or was, did you have any specific missions at all? Or you were just there to, uh, you know, war? Well, uh, my unit, uh, was a, is a reconnaissance unit still. Uh, our job was to gather information. Okay. But, but not by not so much by infiltrating and you know doing this sneaky sneaky stuff as you do in 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 the real war yeah <laughs> real because war. Uh, yeah but imagine imagine you live in a small village you know everybody in that village oh yeah right? yeah yeah and we wear uniforms and guns and yeah, yeah. big vehicles they yeah. know they know we're there all yeah, right they can, we're, they can no... see you directly from a million exactly. miles <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> they know we're coming so, so i want to i want to well, i want to hear your first mission because i can't i cannot hold this on i mean i want i wanted to ask you for like for after two seconds and uh so you're gearing up you uh, you get you get like briefed on your first mission, or you just get like a piece of paper, or you knew already what to do. I want to hear this because when I feel if I if I just put myself in your place in the barracks and you just got your first mission, you're going out and you're going out full geared. You never know. You don't know what's gonna happen. I get like super nervous, and I'm sitting here, and I can't imagine. But I'm not military trained for combat, so that basically makes sense. What I, I could, I could probably defend myself for a few minutes, but I would probably get killed in an instant. But you had combat uh, training. I want to, I want to really hear your thoughts. You going out now? Going out for the first time? Where you got to have some sense of being nervous. Yeah, of course. What happens is that uh, the platoon gathers. Uh, the commander tells us what the uh, the mission is, the yeah. background of the mission, what our what the mission is, what the overall goals are, who does what. You know, this this five questions every military unit needs to be able to answer is who, what, when, where, and why. Oh yeah, yeah. So all this is plotted out. Who does what? When do we do it? Where? Why? You know, everything is plotted out. So everybody's on in on the mission, how to do things. We do a quick rehearsal on uh, how to say immediate action drills, or quick rehearsal rehearsal on um, uh, calling in close air support. You know, a small a small scenario, just yeah. you know to get warmed up. Oh, so you train like? Yeah, yeah. Before you go out, you, yeah, you do yeah. this how to say warm up stuff. You know, you yeah. you rehearse. For yeah. instance, the first mission was a. Uh, uh, we're supposed to do this SSE sensitive site expo exploitation. So basically, what you do is what we call in Sweden "husransakan." You know, when you, yeah, yeah. you you freeze the place, you you go into a compound and you freeze it. Nobody moves in or out. Everything stays in place, and you start to investigate everything. You in, look for in a particular money, house, bombs. Yeah, particular house. Yeah, okay. So money, bombs, and stuff. You know, and this is not reconnaissance business, but still, it's put on the reconnaissance to gather the information, gather the intel out of people or places. So this is what happened. The first, the first mission we actually do. So we get into this house, uh, or how to say? No, we don't get into this house. We rehearse first. We rehearse at the camp. So we uh, look at the house, at pictures, and we can we speak to each other. Right? How many rooms deep is this? Is there a corridor? There is definitely a stairs because because there are two there are two floors on this house. For an yeah. instance, two floors or three floors, and we start to you know uh, go through this, rehearse things. We don't have the time to build mock-ups like the special forces do, and I mean special special forces when they like raid uh, raided uh, Bin Laden's palace. They actually built a mock-up on on that house and trained for weeks. Okay. We don't have the time for that because we're we're still we're deployed. Yeah. And anyways, uh, what happened was we uh, 
we heard, we rehearsed, uh, went through the immediate action drills, and uh, then when we felt everything is good, we sat in the vehicles and rolled out. Uh oh. And no, on the know. way out, on the way out, yeah. as you said, nervousness. I mean, probably it's uh, it's a uh, it's a mix of be for me it was a mix of being nervous and scared. This you know, not afraid but scared because. We don't know who's in there. We don't know if he wants to defend it, if he has reinforcements, if he has backups, if somebody calls him when he sees us going out from the camp and calls him to warn warn him that they're coming and he gets to he gets to have the time to dig down an IED and improvise explosive device in the road. Like it's, it's a bomb that goes off under the vehicle if you, if you drive over it, for instance. Yeah. yeah. You don't know these things, and you take all these precautions not to run into anything you're not prepared for and stuff. And man, I have to say that it's the... Uh, uh, I don't have a better word for it, but it's its a mix of being shit-scared and euphoric. So you gotta, you gotta live on the uh, adrenaline you get there, right? You, you, you're going on... You, I mean, you're going out, and there's, a, there, there's always a risk of you getting killed. And that is, that has to be like the rush because I know, I've, I mean, I read a lot and I watch a lot and the, you can hear uh, veterans telling you the, the rush that you get of being in a firefight is a rush you cannot get from anything else. And I think that's the adrenaline going on. And I feel like that's got to be something you've, you felt. Adrenaline. Yeah. Uh, adrenaline wasn't so present before something happens like that. It was more for for me. I got adrenaline when uh, when uh, how to say when shit when, when shit hits the fan. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say that when the shit hits the fan because it's a very it's a very broad. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I get very understand. broad. But the the things that get my adrenaline going is pretty narrow. It's either you know. Somebody slams a door really hard, and it's a loud noise, impulsive noise. Yeah, that oh. can that can spike my adrenaline some. Okay, yeah, but I, I don't get adrenaline from you know driving very very fast and stuff like that. It it just makes me focused. Okay, so you you're focused so, now. You're focused on the first mission. You get to the yeah, house. Some, what, what's what's the yeah, it, some, something like that? I I would say something between being scared shitless and <laughs> euphoric and focused. Something in between that triangle of uh, very mixed emotions. Yeah, so, <laughs> I get that. I get that. So you go so to the house now. What happens, yeah, we come to the house. Uh, yeah, you know, stack up, and when you stack up, that means you're you're lining up for breach the house. And we uh, take the tools out, use the tools, breach the door. Coming in, they're yelling and flashlights all over the place. Probably, if you if you see a computer game, yeah, uh, any computer game like you know Call of Duty and stuff, it's probably something like that. <laughs> Muzzles and flashlights yeah. over all all over the place, and people screaming and doors kicking. It's tables being turned. It's uh, people getting uh, chaos. That are detained. Yeah. Was so, it you know, was it chaos, but it was controlled chaos? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's a controlled chaos. Yeah, pretty much because we you had, know what you we were doing heard. because you were training. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was controlled because we had trained for this. So Im imagine you, if this was, you know, like in Fallujah, you don't have, you don't know shit about the house you're going into. You only know you need to get into this house and kill people, but on the on the inside, that's chaos. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get it. I, so, you, you, was the house easy to control? The situation was it easy to control? Was there any issues? Oh, it, first mission was good. No issues at all. So you got your your cherry popped at that moment, right? This is first. Uh, you, you, yeah, first combat mission. Yeah, but yeah. You lost. There was no, there was no, no shots fired. No nothing like that. No. Okay, so tell me about the, the first shots fired. What happened? When? Why? How? Who? First time, yeah. First time I got shot at uh, was uh, during a long-range patrol out in the uh, mountainous parts of Afghanistan. Uh, what happened was that the f in a long convoy of, uh, I don't know how many f 
many vehicles. Uh, the lead vehicles got taken out by an ID. And uh, some Afghans lost their lives. Afghan soldiers. Yeah, friendlies. Uh, yeah, friendlies, exactly. And uh, what happened was that after the IED went off, uh, the Taliban on the hills started to open fire on us. So not only did we have people wounded and dead, we also was under fire now. So we had to uh, return fire. And since my job on the, on the platoon was being the sniper, but not the sniper, more sharpshooter, more like. Yeah, you I had, know, a, you had a weapon English, for that purpose. Yeah, you yeah, had a weapon for a that weapon purpose. For, yeah, exactly. To to <laughs> to kick someone's ass from about a thousand meters away, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, took that out with my service rifle and uh, the long range rifle, and uh, me and a and uh, one of the uh, soldiers on my squad, we ran couple hundred meters up to a small uh, not a hill but it was you know uh, it was a little, a little bit higher yeah not a hill but it, it's like a i don't know what to call it you know it, it's a bit it's a bit higher a than bit high, high, yeah a little bit high ground yeah, a high higher ground. ground yeah 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 we set up the set up the sniper rifle there uh, we started to laze the distances to where we thought they were and i have to tell you the Taliban doesn't fight like an army, you know, with uniforms and they stand up and they have big vehicles. They hide. They look like any Afghan. They put their rifles away and walk between the houses to their next position. And then there they have prepared it with a new rifle. They take that rifle up where we don't see him and he starts to shoot us, shoot at us. Wow. When That's he, incredible. When he's done, yeah. And when he's done there, he puts down the rifle. Walks as a normal civilian, knowing fully well we can't engage him right now because we aren't sure it, if it was him or not. So our rules of engagement was, you know, tying us up a bit. Anyways, uh, that happened. Uh, we saw them. And by the time we started to exchange fire with the Taliban, that was like, you know, the first time I got shot at. They saw us, we saw them, and it, you know, it began. It was like a... So you guys were shooting at each other? <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, we shot at each other, yeah. You're still here, so that basically meant you did, did something that you will remember yeah. for the rest of your life. Yeah, let's say it like this. The, re the reason, how to say it, my in intentions, uh, not intentions, my... Uh, expectations of the deployment was that I was being tested, becoming to be to get tested with uh, if my skills were was enough, enough good yeah. enough, if yeah. the training worked and stuff. Yeah, I got the, uh, I got the full uh, how to say. I got the results. If the training works, you got the result. So, yeah. last question for you: Why, why did you go? I mean. There's probably someone else that can go. It was the only reason that you wanted to test it yourself, or was there any other purpose or reason to you want to go to war? Ah, uh, good question. There is, <clears throat> for me, it was because I wanted to, you know, to work with uh, the real soldier and stuff. Because if you, if I can, if I can make this this analogy. There is not one doctor in this world that goes through the whole education, I don't, I don't know, five or six years at, you know, an academy to become a doctor yeah. and then doesn't go to work at a hospital or, or with sick people. Uh, right? yeah. That's a really good analogy, though. But, but in this, yeah, so, in, yeah, okay, continue. Yeah. So for, for me, it was, you know, I, want to, I wanted to become a soldier and do it all the way. You know, really you go to war. Yeah, you want to fulfill it. Yeah, okay. So was that a feeling that you had from the from young age or did that come during your time in conscription or that was before conscription or it came during the it came during the, the conscription time I think because I didn't really want to join the military at the first since it's conscription they how to say if you get chosen if you get picked to go you have to go yeah so you had to so, go, but can, could you deny? So if, let's pretend a captain says to you that, Simon, uh, I'm, I'm going to pick you to go with to Afghanistan because you think you're a good soldier. 
could you on that spot say no? Yeah, no problem. It's all voluntary. Okay, yeah. But so, why would I say no? I will. I want to go. Yeah. No. I, no, no, no. Something yeah. pulling me. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I can't. I can't really explain. But you know, I really wanted to do this, live the soldiering life. Really, you know, be a soldier. That's a wonderful. Go the story. whole nine yards from you know from yeah. training to deployment to the war and back. So how long did the uh, the tour last for you? Eight months. Eight months. So how many yeah. how many missions did you do? I, me personally, my unit of six people, we had one hundred and thirty eight sorties uh, on the first deployment. Yeah. On the second deployment, we had sixty sorties, but the sorties were longer. So wait a minute, you did two a weeks, second four, tour? two to four weeks. Yeah. So you went two home, then back again, another eight months. Exactly. So was that so one tour is normally eight months, you did two, so you did sixteen. Yeah, back to backs, almost back to backs. Well, I think we could talk about this like forever, to be honest. So you your second <laughs> tour, you felt like you were a veteran at that point. Yeah. People tend to, you know, think that they they know it all on the second tour. Uh, okay. That's uh, that, yeah, that's a yeah. saying, you know, when you when you have people think they know it all because he'd been here before. That's that pretty much that's it because on the second second tour we were on uh, uh, a different duty, completely different duty. And I don't want to hear uh, about it. So what, what? So it was not reconnaissance. It was com something completely different. It was on the omelets, uh, OMLT, uh, operational operational mentoring and liaison teams. We trained and fought with the Afghan army. So we were at we lived at the big base where the Afghan army was at. There we gave them training. We gave them, you know, everything they needed to uh, become better soldiers. And then we went to missions. Evaluated, with them. yeah, evaluated their missions and went to the missions with them, and acted like you know uh, <clears throat> role models for the soldiers and the squad leaders. So the, the squad leaders, the the soldiers, and the platoon commanders had something to look up to and learn from. You know, learning by doing. They yeah. have a role model. You know, you can you can tell people to do stuff all the all day long, but in the end, they will do as you do. But that you fought with uh, you you were teaming up with the friendly Afghan army, and was the combat bigger, or was it still like a small sized, like uh, the guys on the hill? I don't know how many they were, but you can probably not estimate it either because you had no idea. Was it any kind of different combat when you were fighting with the Afghan army? In in the valley, in the valley we fought in, uh, we we actually knew get pretty much about the uh, the Taliban since we intercept communications oh. and you know, yeah, yeah. we we have a pretty we have a, we had a pretty good or decent information or information over Overwatch over them. So that that was that was no problem, no issue at all. In the valley we worked in, there were between 100 and 150 active Taliban fighters. Oh. That doesn't mean that there are 150 people gathered no. at the same place. They were pretty and the scattered. valley was, exactly, the valley is pretty long. And it was like 5 or 6 over here, 10 over here, 15 here, 5 or 6, you know, exactly as you said, scattered in small squads. But not at not they don't fight as a military does. So when our convoy of very many vehicles rolls down that valley, and we're like 150, we're like 100 and 150 Afghan soldiers as well, along with our um, a small team of Swedes. We, uh, if they can attack us, they're pretty big. Yeah, they own the valley. If they if they can go toe to toe with a with an conventional army like that. Yeah, they pretty. They own the. They own the valley. Yeah, they knew the land too. That's the. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah. It's their valley. They yeah. live it. The, the boys come from the villages, different villages and stuff here. So, it's no question. We, we're <laughs> we're going into their territory. So th that was what happened on the second tour. So, the of course the combat was much more intense, much bigger, and also much slower. 
Okay. It's a lot of people got to move around. Yeah, you know? yeah, I get it, I get it. But was was that was there a point where you were in a position that could possibly had uh, turn out you being dead, killed? Yeah, yeah, at least two two times. Uh, first time that was really close was when I was uh, I was sitting as a a gunner on the roof off the vehicle where the heavy machine gun was and the, the vehicles we had uh it's like you know a, a up armored jeep mostly i would say a up armored suv oh, with a yeah. under with an under dimensioned ac <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and 40 degrees right. celsius yeah so uh it's pretty hot in there too so anyways uh that that was what we rolled in and i was up in the um i was up in the uh the turret, and all of a sudden, I uh, how do you say? I hear a loud noise, like you know, something explodes. But I feel no concussion, no nothing. You know, nothing like you know what you would expect being close to an, to an explosion. And we keep rolling for about five or six meters because everybody's like, "What the fuck happened?" You know, it's dust everywhere. And after a while, we realized that they had dug an IED right under our where, where we where we were going. They have dug an IED, and we we went right over it. Oh. And they they managed to get that thing off in the right time. Thing is, their IEDs they have made is made of uh, diesel and how to say uh, nitrogen and. The fuck is the word, you know? Uh, fertilizers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this my God. Shit <laughs> yeah, yeah. This shit tends to actually, how to say, vaporize. So when it's, when it's dug down in the ground for too long and st been standing too long, the p potency of the, the yeah, homemade explosive yeah. diminishes. Oh, my God. That's kind of uh, lucky, though. <laughs> that's fucking lucky. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. So, so your, it, it, was, it was your vehicle got hit from well the yeah. AID. Yeah, exactly. So thing is that they they put this in twenty liters. Uh, this how to say this water uh, water cans of twenty liters, like you know jerry cans, but yeah. in, made of plastic. Yeah. If that shit had went off fully, twenty kilograms of HME underneath my vehicle, you'd be dead. I would not be standing here today. I would be dead. Okay, so that was the first time. Second time. Uh, second time, it was during a uh, firefight, and what was happening was probably, well, man in front of me, uh, how to say, he, he carries an RPG, right? You know what an RPG is? Yeah. Rocket yeah, propeller a, gun? Yeah, a grenade, yeah. Yeah, grenade. So, it's a tube that fires a rocket. You use, mainly use it on tanks. All right? But they use it on, how to say, infantry as well. Afghan army. All right? So the guy in front of me, uh, all of a sudden, decides to... I need to fire this it, during a firefight. I need to I need to f get this shit off. I, I'm going to... I'm going to blow this off. You want to shoot that oh. shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the Taliban on the hills. Yeah. thing is that he doesn't watch... He doesn't clear his back blast because you're supposed to, when you shoot this thing, it's a tube. And it's a big, how to say, it's a, like a rocket that goes off. And the so force of the it, rocket, yeah. yeah, the force of the rocket goes right through the tube in the direction, how to yeah. say, 180 degrees from the direction it's firing. And I am like, you know, I remember myself looking into the tube. Oh, no, and, really? And thinking, he's going to fire. So <laughs> I. Uh, I barely, I barely get, you know, turn my face away, and then it comes, swoop, this concussion comes, it's like, you know, yeah. It's a really uh, graft yeah, that I wasn't, can give I you wasn't, internal yeah, damage. I wasn't, yeah, I, I wasn't really, how to say, close to dying, but I remember it very vividly, like, you know, yeah. when, almost like, you know, time slows down, yeah. and, and you feel like, you know, Neo in Matrix. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was a close call, though. Yeah, it's a close call, yeah. Wow. Almost got blue on blued. 
Yeah. I want to thank you for coming on the the podcast or uh, share your story. It means it means a lot for me to share it, and uh, I hope you enjoyed your stay with me. Yeah, pleasure was all mine, man. Thanks yeah. for having me. No worries. We're gonna wrap it up. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, stay tuned for episode two and uh, read description for more information on how to apply. Until next time, I'm Ricky. You guys stay safe.